All right, so let me show you how to enable the various flex time algorithms. First, you want to click on this button up here. This shows or hides flex, and you can also press Command F to bring this up as well. Next, you can choose which tracks you want to enable flex on by clicking this button here. But after you click this button, Logic will take a moment to analyze the material on the track. So what Logic is doing in this analysis is searching for transients in the audio waveform. So what is a transient? Well, a transient is a significant point or peak in an audio file. They're very easy to identify with drums, but not always so easy to identify with other material. But what Logic does is the analysis creates these transient markers that signify rhythmic material within an audio recording. So now that the analysis is done, we can choose a flex algorithm from the drop down menu here. So we have monophonic, slicing, rhythmic, polyphonic, speed effects, and tempophone effects. There's also an automatic option at the top which automatically attempts to pick the best mode based on the analysis of the audio that Logic did. Remember that in this course we won't be covering flex pitch because that's a whole other course on its own. We'll just be talking about flex time algorithms in this course. So each of these algorithms treats the audio material differently when you apply flex time on the track. The unfortunate reality of any sort of digital time manipulation is the introduction of artifacts on the signal. Artifacts are just additional digital noise that can be heard in the signal as a result of the time manipulation, or pitch manipulation for that matter as well. However, in recent years, time manipulation has gotten so good that we can hide most noticeable artifacting in flex time as long as you choose the correct algorithm for the material you're trying to manipulate. And there's several other things we can do along the way to improve the quality of the manipulation, but I'll talk about that when we get to it. So let me just give you a quick overview of what each of these algorithms are and when you should use them. Monophonic should be chosen when you're working with monophonic sources, so basically solo sources that play one note at a time. Examples of this are voice, bass guitar, and this also includes instruments that typically don't play chords like most woodwind and brass instruments. However, the material needs to be dry without any reverb so that we can manipulate the audio cleanly, as cleanly as we possibly can, again trying to reduce the noticeable artifacts. Polyphonic as opposed to monophonic is used for instruments that can play more than one note at a time. With anything that can play chords, you should choose polyphonic. So this includes guitar, keyboards, synthesizers, layered strings, really anything that is playing more than one note at a time. I also find myself defaulting to polyphonic when monophonic is introducing too many artifacts. Sometimes you can end up with material that's monophonic, but the signal is kind of noisy, dirty, or has some extra reverb or effects added to it, either intentionally that way or not. For example, I was applying flex time to a bass part that was monophonic, but the material had a lot of intentional drive and distortion on it, and monophonic just didn't handle that well, so I switched to polyphonic instead and it worked out fine. Rhythmic and slicing are typically used for drums and percussion. Rhythmic does best with drum loops and single track percussive material. Slicing differs from rhythmic in that it slices the material at the transient markers and you can manipulate their placement on the grid without actually stretching or compressing the material. Then the gaps between those slices are automatically crossfaded by logic, producing the cleanest result for drums and percussion. I typically use rhythmic on single track drums and loops and slicing on multi track drum recordings. So the last two, speed and tempophone, are used for special effects. Speed actually adjusts the playback speed of the material as you manipulate it. So as you stretch or expand the audio, you'll hear the pitch go down, and as you compress the material, you'll hear the pitch go up. Tempophone is derived from a real-life tape hardware device that was used to vary the pitch or tempo of tape, but allowed you to independently control the two. The result here is more like a machine-like metallic grainy effect, but it's definitely a cool effect to play around with with the right material. All right, so those are the six flex time algorithms and when you should use them. In the coming videos, I'll show you how to use these in practice.